Everybody that's anybody comes through the breakfast club. You know, you give voice to people that would be voiceless. Right now, your show has the pulse of the culture. Yeah. Everyone smells rich <laughs> and successful. Where y'all at now? Is, can't nobody tell y'all. Non-stop entertainment. The Breakfast Club. Wake, wake, your, wake your punk ass up. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 you, okay. well, that's your job. We gonna start no, this over. I'm start on, it over. No, 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 don't talk to me about a job. Start it over. Okay? Start it over. I want my Kim Kardashian this morning. No. I don't, don't want to work. Here we go. Kim was right about us. We working. He's right about us hoes. I don't want to work. Right about us hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo,
They talk about their new commitments to Ukraine. And today, I'm announcing the United States is prepared to commit more than $1 billion in humanitarian assistance to help get relief to millions of Ukrainians affected by the war in Ukraine. Many Ukrainian refugees will, uh, will wish to stay in Europe, closer to their homes. But we've also will welcome 100,000 Ukrainians to the United States with a focus on reuniting families. We're also coordinating with the G7 and the European Union on food security as well as energy security. They really pick and choose what uh what immigrants they want to come to this country, huh? Mm-hmm. I remember they, they told the Guatemala immigrants, "Do not come to the United States of America." Yeah, they were also discussing how they can make sure our European nations don't need Russia for oil and other the thing uh, and other things that they need Russia for. And they also discuss about the food shortages. Price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And uh, because both uh, Russia and Ukraine have been the breadbasket of Europe in terms of wheat, for example, we talked about uh, urging all the European countries and everyone else to end trade restrictions on, on sending uh, li- limitations on sending food abroad. I'm still tripping on the fact that they didn't want Haitian immigrants or Guatemalan immigrants in the country, but they just welcome in Ukrainians. Ukrainians. Going on. Yeah, and, and they really pick and choose who they want to come in this country. They absolutely do. And in some scary news, North Korea uh, has fired to believe its first intercontinental ballistic missile. I don't yesterday. even know what that means. How far can it travel? Tell me that. DC. It can come. It can hit DC. They said it can hit DC from North Korea. Yes. I don't believe that. That's really? what he said. Yeah, that's what I heard on 1010 Wins this morning. They said that missile could get to D.C. I don't believe that. From North Korea? That's what they said. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I heard this morning on 1010 Wins. That that missile, they believe, can get to D.C. Mm. Which is scary. They said it flew an altitude of 6,000 kilometers, which is 3,700 miles. Yeah, that's what it says. North Korea test launches. Yeah. Which is very scary. So they're, they're saying that they have all these defense mechanisms mechanisms up, and they don't know if possible they can be able to stop it if if they, it, if it's fired. But North Korea uh, got on the news yesterday and said, you know, they're preparing for conflicts with the U.S. Mm, mm, mm. No. Now, now let me ask you a question. Don't ask me nothing. The geopolitical politics is out of my hand. I already told y'all what it is. North, I told y'all North, we can work with North, the right lead now. of North Korea practices a, a missile firing a missile they said you know the missile could get to dc and they're saying we're preparing for conflict with the u.s that's how i felt about that's how i feel about russia too but it, it don't matter i'm not you know those aren't my decisions to make okay i don't even want to think about that it's friday but i'm saying they, they if you got a missile that could get dc and you saying you're gonna use it we're gonna sit back and wait you for them to fire me, bro? i just want to go i just, 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 just want to go to a comedy show this weekend hug on my kids you know what i'm saying Lay up with my wife. I'm not. I ain't got time to be I'm, thinking I'm about this. I just asked you a question. All right. Somebody said they're gonna smack the Listen, itch out man, of you and God shoot you in the head. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot no. change, courage to change gotta, the things I can, and the wisdom to know out. the difference. I, I'm not. You mean figure it out? I ain't GI Joe. <laughs> what you mean <laughs> figure it out? Which is I don't choose. Why I gotta figure this out? I don't know. I'm not in the military. Why I gotta figure this out? Why we gotta figure this out? That's your problem. Y'all always want to figure things out that don't got nothing to do with you. And that's your problem. First okay. you say we're not involved too much. Now we're too involved. Now you want us to figure something out. I ain't say that. I just say be aware. I like am you, aware. Now, now you talk about figuring things out. Like we got missiles in the, in these bo- these Telfar boxes. I'm just trying to get. I'm trying to figure out how to get these bags home today. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you worried about damn that. And leave right. me alone. Last front page okay. news. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need, if you want to, <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Call us up right now. You want to call an Uber? You want to fight? Go to North Korea? This guy, man. 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. Yes, let's go to war. Man, if you I'm just joking. I don't want to go to war. I just want to go home, watch TV. I help, just help said that. Kids. I'm telling you what I yes. want to do, too. This guy. Right. It's Friday. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Damn, damn. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yeah. What's up, Trav? Hey, uh, yee, star. Trav, what up, sis? You not here? Oh, uh, you not here? No. Oh, okay. No, did y'all hear my girl Cardi out here giving vocals on Summer Walker's new song? Well, extended version of her song. She out here giving vocals. Did y'all check it out? Yeah, the no, remix. it's out. The remix is out. 
Yeah, it's out. Y'all have to go listen. Like, Cardi's really out here giving Whitney Houston. She out here giving Whitney a little bit. Man, she shut up. No, first of all, I love Cardi B to death. I love Barty, but nobody gives Whitney Houston but Whitney Houston. Why are you so disrespectful, no, Trav? Right. Y'all generation no, is so is silly. Saying, no, no, she, she really is singing on the record, though. Well, she just say that. that. Just say that. Because now, now when you compare it to Whitney Houston, I'm not going to hear Whitney and I'm going to be disappointed. Why do y'all do oh, that? Okay, okay, well, I was lying. It definitely, it definitely ain't even Whitney. I was lying. Okay. I know you was lying. We all knew you was lying when you said it. <laughs> Can I say one more thing? Go. I want to talk about Rick Ross. You know Rick Ross out here lying, acting like he don't know Saucy Santana when he know that's his twin. He know they twinsies, and he lied about not, about not knowing who that is. I, I didn't even hear that. And why I you like think? Why you think? Why you think that man lying? That man busy. That man buying buffaloes. Because he's from Miami, and so is Saucy Santana, and he a part of the culture, and he changed Trav. the album cover. Trav, do you know everybody you know, in Philly? Know who Saucy Santana is. Do you know everybody in Philly? Uh, I know who Saucy Santana is. But do you know everybody yeah, in Philly? Y- y'all swear just because y'all up on something, everybody else got to be up on it too. Hello, who's this? Hey, peace and blessings, guys. What's going on? Hey, hey Sean Stone. Long time no hear from, brother. Hey, man. I'm just trying to stay safe out here. I just want to say one thing. I agree with Envy when Envy says we got to figure it out. Who is we? Why do you listen? listen, listen no, 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 no. What do you mean no. when you say we got to figure it out, Sean? Let me ask you, what does that mean to you? Because, all right, Sean, man, I, I'm going to do it. I, I believe in the Bible, right? And I believe in Bible prophecy. And I feel like right now, we live in the Bible prophecy. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, speaks about that a World War Three. If World War Three happens, it's going to affect all of us in this world. I know so that. I've been saying that. I've been saying that for weeks. But you know yeah. what else? You know what else the Bible says? Let go and let God. Some no, things, okay. Some things are That's above good. us. So we no, should sim- no, this is not above us because God give us a way how we could escape World War Three. How was that, sir? Celebrate the Passover, Sean. How was that, sir? Celebrate the Passover. It's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17, 18, and 19. No, you know who needs to celebrate the Passover? The, the leaders of the free world. That don't even, like, what, what is he talking about? I don't know. I'm the not. leaders of the free world need to celebrate the Passover. They need to submit their will to a higher power. Then maybe they'll realize that war is not the way. We can do the Passover all day long. It ain't going to stop nothing. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's the word? Envious Mello. Mello, what's up? What's poppin', Mello? Yo, man, I was listening to what you were saying about North Korea with that missile that could possibly reach D.C. Yep. All I want to say about that is you was asking the wrong person. You should not be asking Charlemagne, what should we do? What we need to do is ask all the people who invaded the capital, like, y'all have all this patriotism. Now it's your time to shine. Step up. Y'all deal with North Korea, not us. First of all, um, that's that's I understand what you're saying, but let me tell you something, man. When them nuclear weapons get to flying, ain't nothing nobody can do. Nope. <laughs> okay. Russia got nukes. I'm not sure if North Korea got nuclear weapons, but I'm sure they y'all should have been panicking two weeks ago when uh, Vladimir Putin basically said my nuclear weapons are off safety. Okay. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We ain't got Kurt Franklin Revolution. Some kind of man. I already to. got God. 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Alex. Lex, what up? Get it off your chest. Good morning. Um, I wanted to get off my chest. Oh, my God. It's like two things. First, um, in the military, so this... I mean, I'm sorry. Don't curse. This, Go ahead. Like, it's okay to curse. No, it's not. This China, this China mess is crazy, man. Like, North Korea. Oh, I'm not too far. Yeah. North I'm Korea. Not too but it... far from D.C., so, like, this North Korea stuff is... Man. I need, I, I need to know why the North Korea thing has scared people more than Vladimir Putin saying basically his nuclear weapons is off safety and he ready for whatever. I, I don't know why this scares y'all more than Russia and China coming together, you know, about a month or so ago, basically saying they ready to go to war with Western, not war, but they they, they ready I, for I, whatever when it comes think, to Western powers. We all know that the North Korea president, and I don't want to mess up his name, I think we know he don't give up. Putin, so Putin does? I think yeah. I think Putin gets more of an effort Putin, from the U.S. Than you're out of else. your mind. I don't think North Korea cares about anybody but Dennis Rodman, and I think he would fire that in a minute. Hey, if you think Putin cares about America, you bugging. I don't think he wants that smoke. I don't think North Korea cares. What are you talking about? Putin is the one invading Ukraine now. I, do, I know it. Putin is the one throwing the middle finger to NATO in America now. What are I you know. talking about? But North Korea is the one that seems like the one that they'll fire it just because Man, it's 12 o'clock. Man, y'all talking about what somebody might do, and Putin's doing it now. 
What are y'all talking about? But Putin is more focused on Ukraine and uh, North Korea. He, he, is like I feel like they were just waiting on. They always want to smoke the with the U.S. I feel. Yep. But, but, I hey, Putin is Putin is more focused on the Ukraine now with all of those sanctions that's coming from other European countries and coming from America. You think he don't got smoke for them? You already said anybody that interferes with this war, they're gonna catch it. I don't know. I just he already like said Korea, that. I just feel like North Korea. They just don't care. They just they they've been trying to go to go to war. With Worry them. about it all. How about that? I am. Hello. Okay. Who's this? Hi, good morning. This is Cassandra. Hey, How Cassandra. Good morning. Hey, Cassandra. Yeah, could you guys, uh, uh, please, where does the U.S. get a billion dollars from to give to Ukraine when we got all this stuff going on over here? Is it in dollars? Is I agree. it in weapons? How? Who? How? And secondly, I need the U.S. Supreme Court to please let New Jersey out of this bilateral uh, commission, the Waterfront Commission Harbor of New York, tell Letitia James and the governor of New York, you want to talk about corruption at the port? No, the corruption is on that commission led by Phoebe Soriel. Talk about that. No diversity on that commission. She continues to talk about diversity everywhere, but where it counts, there's no diversity. I like Please. that. I like Make that. I like your energy. And Thank by the you, way, Mama. it wasn't a billion dollars. Congress, uh, Passes past the thirteen point six billion dollar oh Ukraine aid. Okay, goodness gracious! About seven days ago, they approved thirteen point six billion in emergency spending uh, related to Ukraine's fight against the Russian invasion. Hello, who's this? Yo, good morning, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. This is OG Rob. Top of the morning, brother. OG Rob, what up, what's OG happening, Rob? King? What's up? OG Rob, OG Rob, baby, I'm back like I left something. What's going on? What's what happening? Up? Hey, listen, man, I got some bars to get off my chest for this All this Friday, stuff going man, on in Russia, Ukraine, and North Korea, you want to spit some bars? He might have some Russia-Ukraine bars. All right, gotta go. Let's go. Let that right. nuke go. Listen, listen. All right. I'm on the rampage, killing them on the off stage. Stop, stop, stop. Too much nah, death. Nah. So, no, that's too much death. It's already too much death no, going on. I don't, want, rampage. I don't want to hear that. You, you can't start lyric. off that's killing not, people. That's, that's, that's lyric. That's that ain't talking about killing nobody. Yes, you did talk about killing that's somebody. 80. I heard you. I'm talking about in lyrics. Baby, it's okay, lyrics. Okay, okay, all right. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go. All right, all right. I'm on the rampage, killing them on the off stage. Ooh. They said switch the style for what? I got a 12 gauge gun that could body the game and land me on front page and toss out all the Vicks and this mumble sh politics. I'm destined to blow. And just so you know, the takeover has begun. It's the OG show. Watch as I climb the ranks. We f***ing the bank, building the franchise of energy that I put in place. Never disrespect the set. Let me get some. Let me get some. Pass that mic. Pass that mic. I got a question. It's serious as cancer. Who can keep the average dancer? Hype is a heart attack. Nobody's smiling because you're expressing the rhyme that I'm styling. Now, ooh, you don't want nothing. I got some DJ envy is hard as hell. Pause. Battle any battle, I don't care if you tell. I excel. I I got all y'all. I can't. Hey, 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 listen, man. We in the cypher, baby. That's all that, man. We in the cypher, man. Hey, listen, man. Y'all know where to find me. Listen, man. I appreciate y'all for... We don't know where to find you. We don't even know you, OG, Rob. I know. I mean, that's why I'm trying to call so y'all can get to know you. Oh, true, true, true. I got you, true, Rob. True, Rob. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, good weekend, Rob. Have a blessed day, Rob. I'm going to stretch. Have a great day. And y'all too. And y'all too. Have a good weekend, man. I appreciate y'all. All right, bro. Okay, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we got to talk Bow Wow. Don't seem like you really effing with JD. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV. Happy Friday. Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Happy Club. Happy Friday. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Bow Wow. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Now, Bow Wow was on Twitter yesterday. Uh, he was suggesting that he regrets signing with Jermaine Dupri. Now, we all know he was signed to Jermaine Dupri in the late 90s. He dropped two albums, uh, movies, and a host of singles. So this is how it started. Somebody just said, hey, you know, you and JD make great chemistry. And Bow Wow just went off. Shad Moss went off. He says, me and JD have no work chemistry. I ain't worked with that boy in years. He do him and I do me. Snoop is the best thing that happened to me. If it wasn't for him, none of y'all would even know who I am. That's the only big homie I got. He gave me a chance. Everyone else was just add-ons to what we had started. I mean, if you know the Bow Wow origin story, then you know you know Snoop bought out Bow Wow on 
Arsenio Hall, but to say that without Snoop, we wouldn't know who he is, I don't think that's true because he got reintroduced to us later with So So Deaf and Jermaine Dupri. He said, I wish I stayed with Snoop, that's all. And somebody said, well, JD's going to be mad. He said, well, he ain't my daddy. What he going to do? I mean, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I disagree with that one by a while. I mean, I, I mean, of course, it's your situation, but from the outside looking in, you and Jermaine Dupree have amazing work chemistry, and we wouldn't know who you were if it wasn't for Jermaine Dupree. Well, I think JD cultivated his career. A hundred percent. And I'm old enough to remember when Snoop Dogg bought out Bow Wow on Austin <laughs> Your Hall Show. Like, I right. remember that episode, but I didn't, I just knew you was a kid rapping. Correct. I didn't get introduced to Bow Wow. I didn't even know you was on the Snoop Dogg album until later on in life. I didn't realize that was you. I got introduced to Bow Wow from Jermaine Dupri and So So Def. And y'all, y'all do have amazing work chemistry, and you know that because when you are performing now, you're performing a lot of those songs. Correct. That you and JD did. Correct. And, so. a co- you know, and, and then, you know, a couple of years ago, he always says JD is like his dad and all that. So they probably going through some arguments. That's what they go back and forth and do. Mm-hmm. Now, Vanessa Bryant has reached a new deal with Nike, which will create uh, apparel and a new sneaker honoring Gigi, which is, uh, of course, Kobe Bryant's daughter, the first sneakers to be released will be the Kobe 6, the Mamba Sita Sweet 16, which will honor Gigi, uh, Gigi Bryant. All the proceeds will go towards the Mamba and Mamba Sita Sports Foundation. So they finally reached a new deal. That's that's a great thing. Absolutely. Now, Soldier Boy, he was on It's Tricky with uh, Raquel Harper, her podcast, and he was talking about his influence and TikTok better thank his ass. With the trenches, what's up? I'm from the trenches, man. I need that Rock Nation verse, man. You tripping, man. Come on, man. I got Beyonce doing a crank. That soldier boy. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Lemonade. And how'd that change up the game? I created TikTok. It wouldn't be no TikTok if it weren't for Soldier oh, Boy. Sh- okay. What about the owner of TikTok? How about he what don't about him? He, 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 he heard crank that soldier boy too. He seen the video too. He's he like, okay. I'm finna make this app right now. <laughs> Look at these dancers. This is a great way to make money. Kids dancing to a song. Did, did you tell him? Can I get my ten percent TikTok? <laughs> Look at she make it clap. Yeah, number one on Billboard, independent. Got a whole bunch of money. Got a record deal off of that song because of what TikTok. Dropping the clues bombs with Big Draco. If he said he invented TikTok, he invented TikTok. <laughs> damn it. Okay. I, I don't see what, what's the reason of disputing them. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And lastly, uh, congratulations to Jack Harlow. Uh, Jack Harlow announced yesterday, two faces of Kentucky are officially linked up. Uh, Jack Harlow is getting his own meal at KFC. What's the last time you had KFC? Long time. Yeah. So they're saying uh, they long, long he's time. getting his own meal. They don't know what it's going to be, but they're saying that his some of his favorites are uh, spicy chicken sandwich uh, the secret recipe fries, some extra crispy tenders, a side of mac, and some KFC biscuits. They believe that will be his meal. KFC still slaps, I'm sure. My wife used to work at KFC back in the day. Long, 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 long time ago. And you used to work at Taco Bell? Yes, but what I got to do with anything? I'm just saying. And I used to get mad food. free food from okay. KFC all the time. Used to kill some chicken tenders and potato wedges. All right. And damn near choke on biscuits. All right. Drop on the clues bonds for KFC. What's the best, KFC, Bojangles, or Popeyes? Depends. On what? Uh, Bojangles is better for breakfast. I don't even think Popeyes and, K- Popeyes and KFC don't have breakfast. Um, Popeyes chicken is better, but KFC biscuits and potato wedges and sides are better. I don't know, though. Popeyes got some some hot, some All hot right. slides, too. I don't know. <laughs> that is your rumor. That's a report. tough question. <laughs> Bojangles ain't in the conversation for me, though, as far as lunch and dinner. Popeye, it'd be a battle between Popeye's and KFC. Only thing I pop uh, Bojangles I like is the Bullberry Biscuit. How we end up doing a chicken commercial early in the morning? I don't know. Come on, now. And you don't mess with Bon John chicken? They all right. You don't like Bon John? They, no, Bon John is good, but I think I think that's just a regional thing. Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't think that's everywhere. I well, could be wrong, though. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, we got some front page news. Gas prices. How would I be judged if I ate some KFC today? You can't eat no KFC right now. That'd be a good cheat meal. All right. When we come back, front page news will tell you about gas prices. They're trying to help you at the pump. We'll tell you how. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hey, it's Angela Yee. Have you taken a look at the general insurance lately? Switch to the general and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. 
Now, March Madness. All right, let's talk about some of your favorite teams who advanced. Arkansas advanced. Duke advanced. Villanova advanced. And Houston advanced. Now, today, St. Peter's takes on Purdue. Providence takes on Kansas. Iowa State takes on Miami. And UNC takes on UCLA. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, he did reveal he does want to play football. And he is thinking about the Seahawks. Are they thinking about him? (laughs) They didn't say that, but that's what he's thinking. And he still wants to play. Mm. Also, Deshaun Watson, uh, shout to him. He avoids criminal charges from uh, second Texas grand jury. So it looks like he'll be headed to Cleveland and no charges. Charges just seem like they just went away. I thought they'd been, well, the criminal charge. He still got civil, he got civil cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, several states are suspending the gas tax to offer relief to residents. And these gas tax could be up to 25 to 30, uh, 30 cents. Maryland was one of the first to get rid of the gas tax. Connecticut uh, is getting rid of the gas tax. And I believe uh, California will be getting uh, rid of the gas tax as well. So they're just trying to lower the gas prices at the pump to help the people out a little bit. Uh, they didn't mention New York or New Jersey. Uh, Mitch McConnell, that's your guy, right, Charlamagne? Is that my guy? What the hell <laughs> you talking I'm about? I'm just messing with you. Now, he said uh, yesterday that he opposes Judge Kentaji Brown Jackson's nomination for Supreme Court. I went into the Senate process with an open mind. But after studying the nominee's record and watching her performance this week, I cannot and will not support Judge Jackson for a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. First, Judge Jackson refuses to reject the fringe position. Judge Jackson was the court packer's pick, and she testified like that. You're a fool if you let that get you upset, okay? What did you expect? Nobody nobody keeps that same energy like Mitch McConnell. Okay, I know you didn't think he was voting for Sister Jackson, did you? Mitch McConnell told y'all a long time ago, whatever Dems want, they will not get on his watch, ever, okay? He's been keeping that same energy since the days of Obama. He told y'all he's the grim reaper when it comes to things that Democrats want, and he will not support anything they want, so you can't act like you're surprised. Uh, by Mitch McConnell. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Mitch McConnell showed you who he was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, he definitely The hell did you expect? At least he's being honest. (laughs) Nobody keeps the same energy like him. Okay? All right. Not your mind to even get mad about that. Now, Charlamagne, you've been talking to this uh, vasectomy things for the last couple of months, but the male birth control pill is expected to begin trials this year. They say they had some promising mice research. So they're looking for some human trials right now for uh, this uh, male birth control pill. Now, how can they say that's effective for males, uh, 99% of males, but they've only tried it on mice? Well, that's what they do. They got to start trying it on humans now. They, they said it worked for mice, and now they're going to try it on humans. So, so my, do mice have the same reproductive system as us? I don't know. I'm asking. You asking me? Oh, I don't know. You're reporting this story. Are you asking me? It doesn't say if mice has. Oh. I would assume that it's very similar. That's why they tried in mice. Some first. of y'all is just rats. So yes, maybe. <laughs> so, man, I guess so. I, I guess know. so. All right. So if you want to try, would you be willing to try? No. Why not? I'm just gonna get a vasectomy. Okay. All I right. No male birth control. All right. Well, that is your. And first. is it for all males? You know, it's different types of males nowadays. It's like several di- several different types of males. So is it for all males? Or what? What are the types of males? I don't know, but it's a bunch of them. I know that much. Not. There's only one male. Eh, you know, I, 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 I tend to think so, but no. Don't confuse me. Right <laughs> it's only one it's male. The, it's the, not the way this woke world works anymore. You know what? I'm so not, what kind of males? Right. Are, I don't what know. kind of males are these pills for? The male males. I don't no, know. No. I don't know. I don't know. Right. The right. male males. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. The male the males. Male males. <laughs> the male men. The male men. The male men. I don't know. <laughs> For the mailman, the people who work at the post office. (laughs) And that is your front page news. Now, when we come back, we got some special guests joining us. We have Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don Peebles. Man. Now, Cheryl has been up here before. Yes. She is a fifth generation um, president and CEO of McKissick and McKissick. Yep, and yes. Don Peebles is an American real estate entrepreneur. He started out in D.C. He's an Man. author, a political activist. He's the founder and chairman, executive officer of the Peebles Corporation. His net worth is about seven hundred to eight hundred million dollars. Yeah, who's counting? Me. Um, so uh, they, him and uh, Cheryl, they both attended Howard University where they yes. met. So they're going to be talking about some new projects they have going on. In and, particular, the Affirmation uh, Tower that's here in right. New York City. That's right. We're going to talk to them when we come back. This is this is good talk right here. This is what, what, what we should be aspiring to be as far as owners. And we'll talk to them when we come High back. High-level conversation is uh, Ernie Legion and 19 Keys say. High-level conversation. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. 
morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us today. Yes, indeed. We have uh, Cheryl McKizak, Daniel, and Don Peebles. Welcome. Hello. Nice Hello. to be back. You Welcome know, back. Yes, you know, Cheryl is the president and CEO of McKissick and, and McKissick. McKissick. Yes. And Don is the founder, chairman, and CEO of the Peebles Corporation. Mm-hmm. Let me tell y'all something. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of rappers in this room, Mm -hmm. a lot of athletes in this room. Okay. This might be the most money been in this room at one time. (laughs) That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. It's a fact. It's just a fact. Might be the most money that's been in this room at one time. Just want to say that. How are y'all today? We are great. Okay. Glad to be here. Glad that you uh, are having us in to talk about Affirmation Tower. That's right. And I, I know you say y'all wanted to be the most inclusive skyscraper in New York City. What, what does that mean? Yeah, but you break that down because they came in here bullying me first, but just because I went to Hampton University. By the way. <laughs> they came in here bullying, talking all this Howard stuff. But explain what that, that project is about and that inclusive skyscraper. Listen, it was last year when CBRE, a, a large uh, brokerage firm, came to me and they said, Listen, this is up for grabs, and the only person that we think can develop this is Don Peoples. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Don's a friend. He was already looking at this project. And so, you know, if the best and the brightest of this country feel that way, then we certainly know we can do this. And I'm going to let Don explain the project. Well, great. I mean, look, Cheryl and I have been friends since she and her sister were freshmen at Howard. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Y'all got some stories. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and I was in the real estate, beginning of going to the real estate business and Cheryl's uh, family has a long history in it and Cheryl's done an amazing job in building her business here in New York and other parts of the country. And so when the opportunity to come uh, build a building across the street from the Javits Center, uh, one of the major attractions in New York City, mm-hmm. I thought what better place than to build what will be unfortunately the first skyscraper in New York City built by black people. Wow. That's and crazy. And I'm, I'm, crazy. I'm, I'm, it's mind boggling. 2022. Well, I'm sure black people built some, but it wasn't no black people actually behind it on the financial level. That's exactly yeah. right. That black people worked on it, yeah. but they, and not enough, by the way, because the construction um, industry has been discriminating over the years as well in terms of the high paying jobs that are generated by them, but that's changing. So I thought that, you know, we ought to build this building, should be built um, by black developers. And so I thought about this as also we want to send a message that we all work together. And so uh, I called Cheryl first and uh, said, look, you know, one, I want you and your company as a construction company to build this building. Mm -hmm. But also I want you to be a developer and a partner with us in that. So she came in, Craig Livingston, who's been a trailblazer in terms of economic empowerment for black real estate professionals and entrepreneurs. We brought him on um, as a developer as well and put together a team that's 80% black owned. And uh, and then when we were um, designing it, I thought we want an architect that's gonna make a powerful statement. So we picked David Adjay, who I've worked with before, and who was the architect for the Museum for African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., which wow. is the most visited museum in the whole Smithsonian system since the day it opened. And then we committed to 35% minority contracting at a minimum threshold to build that building. And uh, then, you know, when we were designing the building, um, it was going to be super tall. But then I said, why not build the tallest building? Let's build the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. Wow. Built, first building to be built by black people in New York City in terms of financially. And let's make it the tallest one in the Western Hemisphere. And so that's what we started doing. How much will this building cost to make and how long will it take? <laughs> Three point six billion dollars. Okay. Um, Pocket and- change. <laughs> Pocket <laughs> change. Light work. <laughs> Light work. <laughs> it's some work, but we're going to get it done, and it will be one of the biggest projects built in New York City, and it meets two moments. So right now we're coming out of COVID, so America and New York has got to build back, but we got to do it differently. We got to be inclusive because that's the other moment. I mean, these protests that we've had around the country um, over the last two years, um, especially last year was about fighting for equal treatment under the law for black people, but mm-hmm. also for us to have our seat at the table economically. The is, project. is it residential or is it gonna be? Commercial, commercial office, space? two hotels. So starting on the podium, it'll have a cultural center that the NAACP is putting together and then offices for the NAACP. And then last week, Reverend Sharpton and I made an agreement that uh, we're gonna bring the Civil Rights Museum there as well. So that'll be on the lower levels of the building. Um, and then we'll have some restaurant 
and other space on the top of the what's the podium, the bigger part. And then as we go up the tower, two hotels and then offices. And then up top, three levels of event and venue space, a observation deck. And to put the icing on the cake, we are putting an ice skating ring on top. Wow. On top of the building. On top of the building, 1,600 feet up in the air. Everything is intentional, so the name, the affirmation tower, what is the meaning behind the name? We're affirming that we're meeting those two points in time. Mm. Um, when you look at the tower, it looks like it's upside down. Mm. And that's another message. We are turning things upside down. We want to open up this system to people like ours. Because mm-hmm. as you know, when black people are owners, it creates an ecosystem where we help people all along the line. So how long do you think it's going to take to actually complete this project? It'll take us, a, when we start construction, about three years. Okay. And before that, it'll take about a year and a half of design. So we're about five years out from this. How difficult was it to get this project? Um, well, I mean, that's another and story. we're still fighting for it. <laughs> we are I fighting. mean, we are fighting for it now. It's very difficult, but I mean, I expect it to be difficult. I mean, but we're knocking down barriers each day. And in reality, Dr. King, you know, Mecca Everts, John Lewis, it was hard for them too. And we're doing it in other cities. Mm-hmm. We just won a huge project in Boston. Yep, last week we got uh, Boston. I'm yep. sure that was the hardest fight with the Republican governor. Yeah, wow. Well, actually, it was easier <laughs> really? because so give you a sense. So I mean, I, I'm a I'm a big I'm a Democrat, lifelong Democrat, but I'm like what Henry Kissinger said about America. He said America has no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, just permanent, permanent interests. Interest. Black people, we got to have no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, permanent interests. So the governor, Charlie Baker in Boston decided that he saw the unfairness in the system. So what he did is every project that he's doing in that state, 25 points out of 100 is for equity for people of color. Mm. I always ask this question, and I don't even know if you can have one without the other, but what's more important, economic equity or equality? Oh, wow. That's a really good question, but (laughs) I would say the economics are very important Mm -hmm. because then that's gonna help create the equality in my opinion. Don always says this about venture capitalists and there's $69 trillion of money out there that's been invested, but only 1.3% of it has been invested by black firms. Hmm. Um, So we are so upside down on the economic ladder that we just have to do something about that. If we can have access to economic opportunity, we can solve our own problems. Mm -hmm. We can deal with our own communities. But you keep blocking us from economic opportunity, then we're going to continue to struggle. So we can do it for ourselves, then we can expand our community and take care of our own issues. And we can support our own organizations. And they need to stop looking at us. I said this yesterday to a group of white business people. You all need to stop looking at doing business with black people that's philanthropic. It's good business for you. That's That's right. right. All right, when we come back, we have more with Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don Peebles. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Fix them off. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don Peebles. We got to go back to the origin story, because when I hear, you know, y'all knew each other as freshmen at Howard University, that's like some outliers, divine alignment type stuff. Like, did y'all both know that's what y'all wanted to do in the future? I mean, are you, of course, well, your family when was I, When I met Don, Don had bought his first apartment in D.C. As and a freshman I said, at Howard? Well, I was a freshman. He was a freshman, and I was, was uh, a, two years, I think I'm two years older than right. you. Right, so he was in college, yeah. and he had bought an apartment. And I remember my twin sister and I saying to each other, well, who does that? That's who what buys I apartments know. when you're in college? Yeah. And Don said then, he said, I'm going to do transformational development. My sister and I, we always knew we were going to be in the family business. I mean, we're fifth generation. We always knew that. But then over the years, Don was in D.C., Philadelphia, and we kept saying we're going to work together. At some point, we are definitely going to work together, but it just has to be the right right project. project. So, you know, McKissick is fifth generation. Is people's first generation? First generation. Yeah. Wow. Well, you get the money to buy the apartment, Don. If you don't want to tell us, I started started working. I quit college um, after my freshman year and started working in real estate. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, I mean, it was a black government. It was a black mayor and they were focused on economic empowerment for black people. So Mm -hmm. I felt it was a good place to start doing business. And so I got exposed to real estate because my mother was a real estate sales agent and a broker. 
And so I learned from her. And I started my own company when I was 23. Wow. And uh, built my first building when I was 26. But I couldn't have done it anywhere else. D.C. at that time was a mecca for black economic empowerment. It was Atlanta and D.C. Marion Barry. Yeah. 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 And Marion Barry, for all his faults, uh, you know, he was, you know. He just liked to have a good time. Yeah. Good <laughs> <laughs> faults. At, at his memorial service, Minister Farrakhan mentioned that uh, about his history of they were saying that you know he was being criticized for having a drug abuse problem and he said who are you talking about John Kennedy because it wasn't just for <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah so I mean Barry was transformative and the government at that time was and they knocked down opportunities uh, barriers to opportunities for black business people um, Bob Johnson got a start in D.C. Um, I got mine many other black business people did but I met Cheryl and her sister. They were um, freshmen in college, and her cousin was a good friend of mine. And so we became friends, and uh, we both had kind of common interests. They were going into the family business. I was building mine. And uh, and so my son's in our business now. He's 27, and my daughter's 19 and at TCU, and I'm hopeful that she will go into the business as well, and we can build some legacy. But part of the legacy I want to build is demonstrating how we can work together. Mm-hmm. because. I may not be able to do a $3.6 billion building by myself. Cheryl may not be able to, Craig, but collectively we can. Mm -hmm. But Don, you didn't need us. Right, I mean financially, (laughs) but I needed you all in every other way. Mm -hmm. Um, And you all bring tremendous um, resources to the table. I know people are watching this man, and they want so good, man. Hold on, I got some more questions. No, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm just saying, this just feels so good, man. I, I know people gracious. are watching this and they, they, they want to know how, though. Like, it's, you know, it's easy to say, I bought my first building, but, but how? Where did the capital come from? Like, where, do, where does one start? Well, I think the first thing is that with a dream. I mean, developers are dreamers. Um, we're visionaries. And so with a dream and with a plan and becoming a student of the business. And I mean, be, you can be self-taught, read some books, learn about the business. It's not a complicated business, by the way, supply and demand. So understanding the business, having a dream and having a dream to be achievable, but mm-hmm. you know, pushing and then I'm um, finding an idea. Once you find an idea, then you can raise money for it. Now, um, what Cheryl touched on, if you're black, don't expect it to be easy. Um, the Federal Reserve did a study last year there's $69 trillion invested in private equity and venture capital. And that's normally go, that's where real estate developers get equity for their project from private equity. But there's $69 trillion invested in uh, private equity in the United States. And out of that 1.3% of it goes to businesses owned or founded or projects or worked on by blacks or women combined. So white men get 98.7% of all venture capital and private equity money. So the challenge is equity. But if you can, you can raise the money, friends and family and so on, and then build your building or buy a property and renovate it. And then do what I did is I rolled all my money back in. So the first project that we did was $10 million. Back you didn't night. start there. Didn't you started with a, 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 with a an single, apartment, a, a single <laughs> apartment, a single yeah. house. Right. And I think that's the question. Like you started yeah. from a right. your apartment. Yeah, but that, you, right. But then after that. that I started a consulting and appraisal business, and that's how I earned a living and began to accumulate some money to save. Mm -hmm. And then with that money, I found an opportunity to build an office building. But if you have a dream Mm -hmm. and you're willing to do some work, you can make money in the real estate business. You know, we talk about the the, the racial wealth gap in America a lot. Do you think that actually can be closed in this generation? I don't think it can be closed. Mm -hmm. I think we can make some progress, but we won't do it the way it is right now. And one of your former guests is a man I've known a long time and currently president. And I remember his comment about if you could make up your mind between him and Trump, you're not black. Well, I mean, again, (laughs) no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, permanent interests. But he would be at uh, right now in the Delaware um, waterfront on the porch of his house. (laughs) <laughs> if, it um, black if it wasn't for black people, <laughs> but it's time to pay up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, pay up in other ways by giving us access to economic opportunity. And that's when we close the wealth gap. Mm-hmm. A place like Boston, according to the Federal Reserve, the average household net worth of a white family in Boston is $247,000. The average household net worth of a black family is $8. $8. That is an insurmountable wealth disparity without affirmative aggressive eight effort. Dollars? Eight, eight dollars? Eight dollars. Holy cow. Eight dollars <laughs> to 247,000. Mm. 
And so you can't solve that by taking baby steps. Uh, frankly, we can't let these liberal Democrats m- continue mm-hmm. to try to make us comfortable That's right. being poor. So we're going to have to demand aggressive steps economically, not window dressing, not hiring a few black people here and there. And by the way, the other thing, when black people get in a position of power, they got to help each other. Absolutely. We cannot get into these positions and sit in them and then just kind of keep the status quo. So then they can say, see there, we got a black person in here. So we're not racist. We're not doing anything because we can't find any qualified black people. Mm -hmm. Because if we could, the brother over here or the sister over here would be doing it. And they're not. And that's one of the reasons why my company has focused on this issue. And I, I would dare to say that I am the most outspoken advocate for equal opportunity and fair treatment for black people in business and finance. And that, and also that we got to do it aggressively. We cannot just sit back here anymore. What do y'all, what do y'all, what does reparations look like for y'all? I think that what's realistic for us is that the entire system of how our government does business changes and is reflective of population demographics. So if you're in a city that's 50% black, 50% of the government contracts go to black businesses. If you're a business like, you know, Goldman Sachs or whatever, and you are taking institutional capital as an investment advisor, then you've got to deploy that reflective of the population demographic. So if you're running a national business, black people are 13% of the population, 13% of the loans have to be made to black businesses and black people on the same terms that you make them to the white firms. So if we could do that, just a fairness. I mean, we would make great progress, but what has happened here is that the impediments to our uh, to us having fair opportunity are compounded by these obstacles and these injustices economically. To me. Oh, Brother Don, I can't buy no building with fairness. I need some capital. Right. You know what I mean? So don't you feel like America owes us something tangible? Yes. Like Sounds some, good to me. Yeah. yeah. But I think America <laughs> owes us something tangible yes. by giving us capital. Look, I think there should be some place where there's like a pool of capital that goes to black people. Mm-hmm. And the sort black of like people. the PPP loans, right. yeah, but not loans. This should be no, and and if you and if you execute, <laughs> what? Yes. no, and if you execute, then you don't pay it back. Exactly right. But I think we also have to say, okay, what about property? That has to be adjusted. The rep- cash cash reparations or returning of property needs to take place. All right. When we come back, we have more with Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don People. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don Peebles. Charlamagne? How difficult is it navigating the construction industry and the real estate industry as a black person? It's hard knocks. It has been. <laughs> well, a black woman. I black mean, that's woman, even yeah, harder, yeah, right? even harder. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, Don talked about black females starting the, the most businesses. However, we're still only 2% of the businesses in New York City. And so how was I able to build a business in New York? It was really pushing prime opportunities. Not where I was a sub consultant, you know, working under the umbrella of a large firm. No, I had to be the lead person. Whether that was a $2 million project that turned into a $5 million project or a $10 million project. But that was all a fight mm-hmm. because there are no laws out there for that. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to create relationships and, you know, convince people to wow. give you this shot. And that's coming from a fifth generation company. So I can imagine. Oh, yeah. 230 yeah. years. Wow. And we're still having to prove who we are and still not getting the access that we should get. Politically, do you know, do these politicians come to y'all, of course, to make donations and stuff? And, and if so, does that give y'all some type of power when it comes to them? Are y'all, able to, up, yeah, you get are y'all able to demand things from yeah. them? And- so I've been involved in politics my entire career. I was on Obama's uh, National Finance Committee for both of his elections, Bill Clinton's as well. Wow. What I learned over the years is that you can have some access to some people, but even there, we get discriminated against. We're big supporters of many different politicians, but they will be willing to jump over backwards to help a white business person who is, you know, at a high level. And, but when it comes to us, they'll decide when they're going to treat us fairly and when Mm -hmm. they're not, Mm -hmm. and that the money's not as impactful. 
Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a subtlety, and I don't know if I'm explaining it right, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying that's is that our money yeah. isn't as good as the other people's money when it comes to many politicians. Even if you have the same amount of money, even oh, yeah. if, you're, even if yeah. financially y'all on equal footing. Yep. You'll tell us so, there's right. a wall between policy and making decisions as a government leader wow. and uh, your money. And I and yeah. so what I've done is that and so that so fundraising and contributing money is kind of the carrot. So I said, okay, the carrot doesn't work. I'll use a stick. So a couple of <laughs> times that these people have crossed me and treated me unfairly, I form a political action committee and I run an independent campaign against them. Ooh. And because mm-hmm. I figure if I got some money, I need to use it at least to level the playing field for for what I'm trying to do. That's right. And so I'm not going to take it on the chin. And that's the other thing is that they think that they can screw us over and get away with it. So I try to send a message, you know, there's some, re- some repercussions if you treat us unfairly. You think we do ourselves a disservice by always voting Democrat, always being with one party, being so loyal to one party? Yes, I think so. I think we need to vote what policies are important to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And get them to agree to some s- concrete things. So I chaired the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation Board, which is the think tank for the 50 some odd black members of Congress and does that legislative weekend in Washington, Mm D.C. So I chaired that last three years of Obama's um, administration and then going into Trump's first year. And I told the caucus members when Trump came in, I know him and he's transactional. Go meet with him with a list of things for black people because you all weren't elected to be Democrats. You were elected to advocate for black people, your constituents. Mm -hmm. So go with a list of what your constituents want and tell him you want this and ask him what does he want and see if there's a deal to be made. But you can't put the black agenda on hold for a four to eight years because right. you don't like the guy in the office. You got to play a That's game right. of power. You got to constantly fight because our agenda can't wait. So we should do business with whoever we have to to get our program going forward. And then we can vote again later. The Democratic Party takes us for granted. That's right. Mm-hmm. And they have for a very long time. And frankly, we should be on the front steps of the White House telling Joe Biden, this isn't enough. It's great that you appointed a qualified woman to the Supreme Court, a black woman. All right. But here's what we need. Yeah, and he owes the majority, 6-3 right? right. in the Supreme Court. Yeah, right. Expand the Supreme Court and add four Jacksons yeah. if you want to. If you want to really right. make an impact. Yeah. But also, he's responsible for the 1994 crime. Bill. That's right. And I tell him to his face, he's responsible for it. He's cleaned it up. And he has not addressed that yet. Mm-hmm. And he spoke passionately. And he was the floor leader in the Senate for Bill Clinton for the 1994 crime bill that led to the mass incarceration of black men and women. Mm-hmm. And, and these mandatory sentences that destroyed lives. So he's got to clean that up. And he's got to clean that up, not just with criminal justice reform, because that's only going to deal with what's going forward. But secondly, he's got to make right what he's done to our community and our people since 1994. Before the 90s. Yeah. Because, you know, the mandatory minimum sentence in the crack laws, that was the 80s. 80s, you're right. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I said that to him, I said, um, you know, it led to mass incarceration. He said, no, it didn't. It was the mandatory minimum in the 80s. I said, well, you wrote that too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote that Who was easy to do business with? <laughs> Is it Biden or was it Trump to do business with? I think Trump would would be easier to do business with because there's no competing interest and he's a decisive person. I think that the Democratic presidents have tried to make this rainbow constituency happy. So same thing about reparations and, a fr- and, and minority contracting. Mm-hmm. This country owes two classes of people a great debt. It owes Native Americans a great debt and then it owes black people a debt and it's time to pay that. And Biden could do that. Um, frankly, I was disappointed because I thought that um, President Obama should have done it. But Trump is transactional. Mm-hmm. So you can do business with him today and be against him tomorrow. He's going to understand that because he's wired that way. So we have to be focused on getting business done. And to this point in time, I can't think about what the president of the United States has done for black people. I agree. And he's been in office for a year. So how long do we have to wait for the man that we single-handedly put into office. Right. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our agenda is always last, isn't it? Oh, yes. If at yes. all. Yep. 
Yes. Great conversation. Hey, Sister Cheryl, Brother Don. I feel like I went to church and class. <laughs> we did. We did. Cheryl McKissack, Daniel, Don Peoples. I mean, that was class. Man. That was, class. That was a course. So what's the call to action? Well, Greg Cardone would have charged us 5000 for that one. But yeah. We need everyone to talk about Affirmation Tower. Okay. We need this to be a movement because this is going to change how we position ourselves. It's changing a paradigm for black people, not only in New York, but in our nation. And that's the call to action. They need to call the governor's office of New York mm -hmm. and say that they support it. They need to call their, uh, their New York City resident or New York State resident. They need to call their elected officials and say that they support this project and they support what it stands for, which is economic opportunity for black businesses. Mm -hmm. And going forward, we got to hold anybody running for office that wants our support. What are you going to do for us economically? That's right. What are you going, how are you going to right the scales of injustice that we are dealing with? And that's the call to action. Economic empowerment for our people will lead us to a much better place. Because we can, what did James Brown say? I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Open the door, I'll get it myself. That's right. Right? Well, that's what we want. Open the doors of opportunity. Let us do our thing. We right. have shown. I want both, Don. I want right. to open the door and I want something to be sitting on the table when I walk in. I agree with you. And it should be. By the way, our our ancestors paid for it and we got nothing for it. Right. They got nothing for it but extreme oppression. And so this country owes us a debt. The White House that Biden is sleeping in was built by slaves. That's right. That's it. Well, we appreciate you guys Ooh. for joining us. Thank you so much. Man. And please, anytime y'all want to pull up, pull, pull up. up. All right. Okay. Yeah. We will. Absolutely. Okay. We will. Absolutely. Right. Thank Breakfast you. Breakfast Club, good morning. I want some chicken. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? When y'all started talking about KFC and Popeyes this morning, I think I'm going to have me a cheap meal this weekend. It's going to be one of those two things. White meat or dark meat? <laughs> Beige meat. All Morning, right. everybody. It's Slightly CJ, yellow. Envy, Angela Yee. The color of dirty <laughs> urine. We are the All Breakfast right. Club. You know any? No. You know I can get some? No. Hmm? I don't know where you can get that. Oh, I like a waffle color. That's what I like. That's how I like it. Oh, my goodness. Want to keep, the keep going? No, I'm done. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk loud. You're not done, actually. This is the rumor report. I know well done when I see it. You're not it. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. No, 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 no. I just want to tell you how stupid this is that I'm doing rumors. But all right, Angela Yee is out. So let's start off with Lotto. Shout out to Lotto. Lotto's out. Big Lotto. Today it's 777. So congratulations to her. But now there was a, a, a guy, uh, Monday Music is what they call him. I'm sure I pronounced his name wrong. Uh, he basically insinuated that Lotto doesn't write her own music. He put it on uh, Instagram or Twitter. Shout out to the time I came up and wrote for Lotto on Saucy Santana's Up and Down. Completely got left out of the credits and ghosted. Wow. Olato responded, look at this dumbass trying to say he wrote for me. Recording like a fan while I'm literally in the studio. You can see me writing with a pen in my hand. I need more sass. Say one more sass. I need more sass coming from the back of your throat. Come on. Uh, uh, look at this dumbass trying to say he wrote for me. Okay, okay. Re recording like a fan while I'm literally, literally writing with my pen in my hand. As Santana says, you can hear him in the video says, did you get the line yet, Lotto? Period. Period. The jokes write themselves. So she responded to him. Now, Lotto is also, now when she was up here, she that told- That was the story? That was part of the story. That huh. was that. She, she fired back at him. But Lotto's still in the news. When she was up here, she talked about the artist that uh, allegedly said that he wanted some nookie for a verse. Was what it Kodak? Is, I don't want to say who it was. I so, just feel like, because it's going to distract from the music, and my intentions is not to get anyone dragged or anything. I just wanted to speak from, like, what, what do I deal with? I don't specifically want someone to, you know, get dragged. I kind of wish, in a way, I didn't say that. It's yeah. like a hip-hop who done it at this point. And then Kodak yeah, posted I was today, not, he said, that, that mulatto girl <sighs> is not talking about me, homie. I just think that... How did that person react? Because I'm sure at that point, it's like, well, I don't... Want to be on the album because not everybody gonna be looking well, at sure me. I haven't heard. I'm cursing you out. I haven't heard from them. Well, now they're saying Kodak Black's DJ goes off and explains allegedly what really Who's happened. Kodak Black's DJ. What's his name? Uh, D Y R Y K. D R R. <laughs> D Y R Y K. What that spell? You don't know. It sounds like dirt, but I'm not sure. Okay. okay. Continue. Right, but anyway, but he posted. Uh, and shout to uh. Taylor, she's the one that gives me these rumors. So if they're wrong, blame her. Uh, he says, let me fill you in what this bull-ish with Lotto is all about. She asked for a feature a while back. Man, just get to the point. Let's get to the meat of the I got to read it. Shut up. I'm sure there's a point in there. 
I'm feeling like Angela Yee now. Let me finish! Oh, God. All right. Now, uh, we charged her our, our normal rate, and she wanted a swap. Since her verse won't really do anything for us, we asked her for a swap for our female artist and charged her substantially less. She declined and said she was going not to use the record. Out of the blue, she decided that she wanted to accept the higher fee and use the actual verse. So that's where they're saying the beef came. But Kodak Black actually got on live and he wanted to clear it up himself. Why y'all need to play this? Because two <laughs> things. Here we are. This ain't got no kind of screenshot, no kind of motherfucking, no kind of nothing that say I was trying to text a bitch or I was trying to get I was a trying to text a bitch. I was trying to be in any of that shit. Oh god. I'm too old for all of this. Just want y'all to know that. This is so stupid for me, but hey, Angela is out. What am I do? All right. Well, what that, was the moral of the story? There's no moral of the story. I'm just giving you the facts. You can make up your own opinions. Okay. All right. Lastly, Jennifer Hudson. It looks like her engagement ring is up for auction. We know that Jennifer Hudson and her ex-fiance, uh, David Otunga. You going to buy a girl? Uh, got engaged in 2008. The pair, you want it, don't the pair you? Or who are parents to David Otunga Jr., He's actually selling the engagement ring right now. He's a former professional wrestler. How much? He has it listed on I do now, I don't dot com, which specializes in reselling <laughs> jewelry. What? That's really a website? Yes, it is. I do now, now I don't dot com? I do now, That's I amazing. don't dot com. That's amazing. That's incredible. Now, Nia Lane was uh, commissioned to design this ring. It's a five carat ring and is currently listed at $45,000. So if you want to get the same ring that... Jennifer Hudson had at one point. You can purchase that on I do now, I don't dot com. Is that a good flip? Five, I don't know how, how many carrots? Five carrots. Uh, it's average. It's average. It's retail. Okay. That would go more wholesale, a little lower. But, uh-huh. All right. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. I could have just been on Shade Room for all of that. All right. What do you want me to do, huh? <laughs> what do you want me to Make do? Make up something, dude. All right. All right. All right. Well, who are you giving Entertain your Entertain donkey- me better than that. Who are you giving your donkey to? Oh, man. Four after the hour. Let's talk niggas and crackers. Let's get to it, damn it. All right? Let's keep it real basic and generic this morning, all right? Okay. Let's talk niggas and crackers for after the hour. Were, I wasn't okay? prepared for that. Now nah, you should always be prepared in America for niggas and crackers. All right. Okay? All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right, well, we'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. I teamed up with Zyrtec for this allergy relief message. Springtime brings vibrancy to the air and pollen. So I take Zyrtec when allergy symptoms start. Save the tissues and live vibrantly with Zyrtec. Starts working at hour one and stays strong day after day. Make sure you tell them to watch out for Florida, man. Florida, man. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes, you are a donkey. A Florida man attacked an ATM for a very strange reason. It gave him too much money. Florida man is arrested after deputies say he rigged the door to his home in an attempt to electrocute his pregnant wife. Police arrested an Orlando man for attacking a flamingo. The Breakfast Club, bitches. Donkey of the day. With Charlemagne the God. I don't know why y'all keep letting him get y'all like this. Donkey of the day for Friday, March 25th, goes to Colton Pete Norsworthy of Okechobee, Florida. Is that how you pronounce it? Okechobee? Now, what did your Uncle Charla always tell you about the great state of Florida? Uh, the craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. But Colton's brand of crazy isn't just regulated to Florida. Oh, no, no, no. You can get this brand of crazy anywhere in America at any given time because his brand of crazy is good old-fashioned American racism. What makes Colton's situation unique is where he decided to be racist at, though. See, earlier today, we had a quick discussion about what is better, Popeye's, KFC, or Bojangles. What did you choose, Amy? Um, Popeye's. Okay, for me, Bojangles is just good for breakfast. Uh, between Popeye's and KFC, I like Popeye's chicken, but I love KFC's chicken strips, and I think Correct. KFC's biscuits are better. Yes. Actually, I, I think agree. KFC got better sides, period, personally. Bojangles got some bad fries, though. They, ooh, them French fries. and They do, they yeah. do, they do. Now, now, miss us with all of that, uh, oh, Charlamagne and Envy are such coons. They on the radio talking about fried chicken. We all love fried chicken. Drop on the clues bomb for fried chicken, damn. The only reason y'all think 
fried chicken is a stereotype is because the white man told you it was. I've told y'all this quite a few times on this radio. Chickens were a great source of food for slaves because they were cheap and easy to feed, not to mention tasty. But they had a particular utility for slaves because they were cheap. All right? Chickens were cheap, easy to feed, and a good source of meat. Okay, not to mention uh, the 1915 movie Birth of a Nation shows a bunch of actors portraying some shifty ass black elected officials and they in there drinking, being disgusting as hell and eating fried chicken. All right, that one scene solidified what white people thought of black people and fried chicken. So once again, the only reason it's a negative stereotype is because racist white people said so. So when, because the reality is they love fried chicken too. All right, that's why today's donkey Colton Norsworthy was in a Popeye's. Okay, see, Colton went to Popeye's. Who knows for what? If I had to imagine, he might have went for the flounder fish sandwich. He seems like the type to go to Popeye's for a fish sandwich. Who does that? No, I'm lying. He went for the chicken, as you will soon hear. Uh, he went to Popeye's, and at some point, for whatever reason, he decided he wanted a refund. When he didn't get one, he resorted to some classic, 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 classic racist rhetoric. Now, before I play this audio, let me give you a disclaimer. Uh, this could be triggering. Uh, if traditional racist rhetoric offends you, then you're about to be offended. Okay, I mean, what you are about to hear are the basic racist slurs used when a white person and a black person are going back and forth. Okay, <laughs> in fact, this is how every interaction should go. When someone calls you the N-word, this is how verbal warfare should be. Would you like to hear? Let's listen on this fine Friday morning. Refund my mail. You want to talk to your boss? You want to talk to her? You for her call me a f***ing cracker? And what was you say? I called her a nigger after she called me a cracker. You have a nice day. Call the cops. Call the cops. And you think I won't? Y'all, all you niggers think this is f***ing acceptable? Huh? You f***ing nigger. He can't call me that. He a cracker. F*** him. He can suck a Right, right, right. Just like I told him. You can suck a 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 Put me on TikTok. I bet you. I bet you. Put me on Cracker. I bet you. I'll beat the. You can suck a cracker. You can suck a cracker. And look at what you're acting like, cracker. 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 Where's your cracker? Cracker. Cracker. Your grandmama got it, bitch. Fat ass cracker. Fat ass. And body shaming. Your chicken getting cold, fat boy. Your chicken getting cold. Wow. Your chicken getting cold, fat boy. Racist slurs, body shaming, inviting people to the privates. That was amazing. Okay. <laughs> That's wow. right. See, if you've been listening to your Uncle Charlotte, Brother Lenard for a long time, then you know there was a time where I would encourage y'all that when they go low, you take it to the floor with them. Scrub the damn ground, okay? But now as I've gotten older, as I've done the work on myself to heal with therapy and other things, when they go low, I go medium, Okay. Because God and my therapist still working on me. So this, to me, is medium. All right? Same way some of y'all like your steaks. Now, I must say, this was some really fine use of the N-word. Okay, there were some good niggers in there. All right? Colton was throwing it around. Okay, listen. Let me hear one. Niggers. That's, that's pretty good. But you cannot have it both ways, Mr. White Man. You can't be racist like this. Niggers. While you're ordering chicken. All right? Something your people made a negative stereotype. Okay, you can't call someone else the N-word as long as you are the one ordering fried chicken. Okay, because guess what, uh, Colton? In that moment, you the nigga. All right, but what I love about this video is the sister who would not back down from those N-words. You call me a nigga, I'm going to call you a cracker. Listen. Cracker. And she was singing it. Cracker, cracker. That's cause and effect. You call me the N-word, I'm going to call you a cracker. That's cause and effect. And the fact, oh, we're not even talking about this. The fact she added a SMD with it. Mm -mm -mm. If the cracker is the two-piece spicy chicken from Popeye's, then the suck my D is the red beans and rice. See, Colton thought he would say the N-word and those folks was going to shrink themselves and cower. No, that sister stood up tall and said it with her chest. Okay? All right? Cracker. Gotta say it a little bit harder though, sister. I like how you was adding the spicy side dishes to it, but you gotta say it like Chris Rock. How Chris Rock said, Cracker ass cracker. See, that hits hard. That hits hard. But what made her execution great was to suck my D. And for added measure, since uh, I gave you this two piece spicy in the form of cracker, some red beans and rice, and uh, in, in the form of an SMD, how about take some of these mashed potatoes with Cajun gravy and dry ass biscuits in the form of a fat ass? Your chicken getting cold, fat boy. Oh my God. 
Your food getting cold, fat ass. See, that right there makes a fat person have to make a decision. Do I want to continue to be racist or do I need to get my Popeyes while it's still hot? Decisions, decisions. Mm -mm. The moral of the story is everything is energy. Your thoughts begin it. Your emotions amplify it. And your actions increase your momentum. Colton, you should have just avoided. You should have just avoided your food and bounced. Okay, instead you decided to get spicy like the chicken you ordered, and spicy is what you received. Now listen, I forgot to say this earlier. All is fair in love and racial slurs, but Colton went too far. Now I know what you're saying. What possibly could have been said in that exchange that went too far? Well, listen to Colton. Lynching. Really, Colton? On a scale of one to Strom Thurmond, you decided to jump off the scale and go full Roots miniseries on us? We just doing some good old-fashioned racial slurs, some good old-fashioned body shaming, a little invitation to the private parts, which technically she doesn't even have. So it should just be a regular day hey, hey. and racist ass, huh? You don't know what she has, sir. That is true. I don't know what she identifies as. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But it could have just been a regular day in racist ass Okabechi. Oka, what's the place called? Okeechobee, Florida. But no, Colton, you want to make it a hate crime. Kathy Griffin, please do the honors. Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee haw. <coughs> oh, what? Uh, Chelsea Handler? Because let her get in on that too. Hee haw, hee haw. That is way too much Dan Mayonnaise. And then you know, bring Chris Rock back just for good measure. Cracker ass cracker. Ah. Crackers. Crackers. <laughs> that, 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 that should be the new one. That makes me feel good. Hit it one more time. Crackers. <laughs> it's cause and effect, people. You call me the N-word, you will receive a cracker. Okay? Good morning. One more time. Crackers. All right. All right, when we come back, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday. All right. Now, today's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question actually comes part of Lotto's uh, conversation we had with her yesterday. If Big Lotto. It, she was talking about uh, a sex tape if she owned one. Have you ever done a sex tape? Yeah. Welcome daddy. to the service. <laughs> Lotto Daddy. Yeah. Are you scared that it's like, do you have it? Did you erase it? No, I'm sure it's long gone. You sure. sure? Yeah. <laughs> Daddy! You have one? Wait, Daddy. like my first relationship. That's about to be an NFT. Why would you even <laughs> no, say that, Lotto? it's not. It's gone. It's gone. You sure? Yeah. So we're asking 800 585 1051. You guys out there that created a sex tape, or you guys that did a personal sex tape to send to your boo boo, or even a, a selfie nude to send to your boo boo, have you ever sent any of that to the wrong person? 800-585-1051. If you're a certain age, that's impossible. Have you ever sent a nude or a sex tape that you can made it uh, that you made for your you know your boo boo your spouse? Have you ever sent it to the wrong person? If you're 40 plus, then you probably actually had to send a tape, and it, it was an actual VCR tape that's floating around the hood, like uh the the, the when Kane killed um. Killed those people in Minnesota society. Not no. Kane, old dog. Killed those people in Minnesota society. 800-585-1051. Have you ever sent a video or picture to the wrong person? Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Power 105.1. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, 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 freaky Friday. Friday. And the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question is, have you ever sent a nude or a sex tape to uh, the wrong person? Now, Charlamagne, you sent me a nude one time. I ain't never did no stupid stuff like that ever in my life. Now, you know what? you got a son, okay? So you got mean? a whole family, so what that all right? And I got a whole family, too. I've never even taken nudes before. All right, well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Good morning, this is Jasmine. Now, Jasmine, what did you do, Jasmine? It's, okay, so it's awful, but about, this was like maybe 12 years ago before technology was really getting, uh, I was happy with technology. I, I had a hot girl summer, and I was sending some videos and photos to like four different guys, but I accidentally put them in like a group chat. So you sent all the guys that you was messing with the same photo. 
In the same group yes, chat? Yes, yes. The same, oh, not knowing that their names and contact numbers were all showing up. Oh, my goodness. In like a, in like a group chat. So what, what did they say in that chat? Only one of them, because there was one of them that I was like almost kind of serious with. And he was the one that called me out and showed me my mistake. And that was that was the end of that. Do you talk, <laughs> do you talk to any of them anymore? Probably. Oh, you still speak to them? Probably. What? I, I'm sure I do. You know, they don't, they don't usually, you know, go away. Is that many guys you don't know if you told you asking the wrong questions. What would a response? This this was like this was probably about twelve years ago. So I just and it was a hot girl summer that year. But you know, I'm sure I'm sure I'm still on good terms with all of them. What were the responses? Only one of them responded with that called me out. What did she? What did he say? He basically like told me because he knew some of the people in the group chat. Wow! So you was just out here, just out here running through a whole crew. Hot girl summer. Hello, who's this? Good morning, this bird. Good morning, y'all, man. I love y'all, man. Bird, what's up, man? Who you? Who did you send a picture to, brother? Or a video? Man, I meant to, I, I meant to send it to my girl, but I ended up sending it to my grandma. So I got one old school grandma. So once you see the picture, I, I had to act like I had a boat for something on there to say, "Granny, is the sun wrong?" <laughs> so you sent your penis to your grandmother? Man, I didn't try to. I, I you know, these iPhones click over too fast and end up sending. What she say? It's too little. That's your that's your daddy side of the family. Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> what she say? She do that. I don't see what's back. She ain't even send you no Bible scripture or nothing. She ain't even tell you get your life together. Nah, she didn't say that. It's just what I seen her. She like pulled me to the side. She's like, ah, uh, yeah, you need to go to the doctor. Son. You need to go to the doctor. I saw some bumps all around it. My goodness. Hello, who's this? Uh, Shalonda calling from Jersey. First of all, Shalonda. serious question. Why would your grandma tell you to go to the doctor after seeing your penis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's, what, what, what was wrong with your penis so he, much? He said he had a problem with his penis and he showed his, his grandmother so so he could get some help. Mm. Hello, Hey, Shalonda. Now, now, what did you do, Shalonda? Um, okay, so you know how you can record stuff on an SD card and you would like, have it in your camera back in the day? Yep. So I had recorded a video. I was a freshman in college, and then my father had used my camera, and I forgot all about the SD card being in there. And God rest his soul because he passed away, but he found it. So I can laugh about it now, but in that moment, it was not funny. What did he say? How did he call you? Um, he was like, sure, what the fuck is this? And I was like, ah, uh, and I just couldn't even think of anything off the top of my head. It was just real bad. And Damn. my dad's like, yeah, it was just crazy. What was you doing on the tape, though? What was you doing on the tape? Very inappropriate stuff that my father did not need to see. With another, with another human being? Yes, with my boyfriend. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how are you supposed to... Re- now my fiancé, so it's not too bad, so... How are you supposed to respond? Oh, that's your fiancé now? Now, yeah, but back yeah. then she was a yeah. freshman in high school. Oh, you know, college. okay. That's cool. College, yeah, college. That's cool. Uh-huh. That's not cool. No, that is cool. No, it's not. I would much rather my no, my I would if 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 my daughter did get put out there like that, I would much rather her it be with somebody that she's going to end up with for the rest of her life. Yeah, you bring light to the moment. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you, mama. Caroline, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Now, what happened with you, Caroline? All right. So, as a graduation present, my dad bought me a Mac computer when I graduated from college. And one of my partners who I was working with at the time was trying to get, holler at me for a long time. And he was like, yo, just come get this Cali D. And I was like, you know what? He sent me a picture. I was like, on it, let's go. So I invited him to my house one time and me just being adventurous, I actually had turned my computer on and recorded it. Put the video away, didn't think nothing of it. Two weeks later, I get a text message from my mom. Oh, so you think you're an effing porn star now? And I was like, wait, what's she talking about? I saw the video. I was like, and then she was like, well, who your father also saw it. I'm like, ooh. So I I walked home that night a little bit slower than I normally did. And by the time I got there, she was like, hmm, that's what you be doing with this computer? It's supposed to be graduation present. How dare you? Da, 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 da. But eventually she got over it. But it did make it into the chapter of my memoir about my being an exhibitionist because it was confirmed in that moment. Can I ask you a question? I do really want to know this. Why do people feel the need to record these acts? Well, I would say I was smaller and I looked good. Like, I looked fabulous. I think back to now, like, I wish I knew how good I look compared to what I look like now. And I was like, my body's <laughs> the angles. Be right kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> Be kind to yourself. You're not being kind to Damn. yourself. He's being honest. No, she's not. Yes. She's being mean to herself. That's not uh, you, That's not honest. Well, I, I still love myself, but it was just a little bit more. You know, it's a little bit more. How much you weigh now? Oh, I'm 220. 
How tall are you? Five four. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Hold on. What you say now, Solomon? I'm not saying anything. I think that you yeah, know. I know what he's saying. That's I'm not I'm saying about. nothing. I'm I, I'm Thank not you, saying mama. nothing. I'm tell, there's somebody out there that will love you. Okay. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, you have, you have it, a good one. It don't matter that you build like Trader Troops bump box. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I hate you, man. I didn't want to say that. I know. Yes, you did. Forgive yes, me, God. Did. I, didn't, I did not want to say that. You didn't expect 542. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that. 800 585 1051. It's Freaky 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 Friday. We're asking Have you ever sent a nude or a sex tape to the wrong person? Let's talk about it at the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, 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 Freaky Friday. Friday. And the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question is, have you ever sent a nude or of sex tape to the wrong person? That is the question. It came from Lotto's interview because we were joking her that she created a sex tape and hopefully her father wouldn't see it. So we're asking. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's your name, Hello. bro? My name is Chris. Chris, what's up, man? What did you do, Chris? Sarasota, Florida, not Okeechobee, Florida. Okay, what did you do? About that uh, incident happened at the Popeye. What is called? What is called, brother? I'm calling from Sarasota, Florida, not Okeechobee. It's called oh, Okeechobee. got you, got you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's real racist out there, bro. Real racist out there. I was calling about the sex tape thing. I thought that's what we were talking about. Go ahead, yeah. What's up? What happened? Hey, yeah, 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 man. Um, this happened in my... It's happening like 98, man. I'm, you know, I'm 51, so you know, yeah, like like Charlemagne said, man, this was on a VCR tape. A real tape. Um, yeah. So check this out. My nephew came over to spend the night, and uh, I was at work when I got home, and I had no idea that uh, he had gone in and grabbed one of the movies, man. It was one of the movies that my girl and I had made, man. And uh, you know, he enjoyed his stuff with that thing for probably, excuse me, for a good month. Or so, because he ended up staying with us more than just the night. So when his mom came to visit, that's how we found out he even had the movie, man, and was watching it and enjoying this stuff. And just like, you know, younger kids, you know, when they first start seeing that kind of thing, you know, they get infatuated and, you know, it becomes their form of masturbation. And that's what he did, man. Damn. It was kind of crazy. That's what happened with my first um, sex tape that I made. So it kind of got out. Not, not the... I didn't like give it to him, you know, essentially like questions the guys were asking. Was, <laughs> had to All right. One by mistake. Where the tape at now, so, sir? Oh, that tape long gone, bro. I have no idea where that tape at. We talking about 98, bro. This is 2022. Got okay. you, got you. I'm just Thank making you, sure it didn't go digital. Hello, who's this? This is Ebony. Ebony, good morning. Talk to me, Ebony. Good morning. I'm calling about that big lotto topic. Go ahead. What happened with you? So I'm military and I was deployed overseas at the time and I was spicing up my relationship and I decided I wanted to send my husband at the time the news. I sent him. He was cheating on me. The girl that he cheated with decided she wanted to send the news to everybody in his phone, including my family. <laughs> so everybody in my whole family's got my news. What Damn a, it, man. What a bold ass side chick. How dare she? The audacity. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was nasty. I had, I came back from my deployment. My dad, he didn't want to look in my eyes. Like it was embarrassing. I want to know how does she justify that with herself though? She's already the side. Did she think that he was gonna break up with you to be with her after she did that? Well, they broke. Well, they broke up. I think she did. I think she did. But I mean, he tried to reconcile when I got home, but I divorced him. Oh, you divorced him because of that. Yeah, I was done. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's a violation. I want to ask you this question. Now, if he had just cheated on you and you would have found out, would you have divorced him? Or is it the fact that she sent your sex tape out to everybody? It was it was more so of the sex tape. It was embarrassment. Like, I just couldn't come back after that. Like, cheating is one thing, I think, in a relationship. But when you go that far and you blandly let a woman that you're dealing with disrespect me, I can't come back. I okay. agree. Thank Lord you, have mama. mercy. That's a different yeah, level of foul right there. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is you can't trust these goddamn side chicks. That's why you got to be with one woman, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy, man. Get Find you one woman and just build and have a nice, stable life. Lord have mercy. That's just evil. All right. Well, up next, we got the rumors. Of course, it's New Music Friday. We'll let you know what new albums came out, what new songs came out. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Whatever you been dreaming about, I what's wrong with you today, man? You need some chicken or something? I'm definitely going to get me some chicken. Y'all done talked about chicken so much on this goddamn radio this morning. I want me some fried chicken and some Popeyes. Yes. I want to have a cheat meal this weekend. All okay. Right. Well, morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club, and it's Friday, so you know it's New Music Friday, so let's get it to it. 
it's about time. What's going on? Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, first and foremost, congratulations to Lotto. She dropped her album, 777, today. Big Lotto, and I love the title of that album because she's uh, she said, you know, seven, as we all know, is God's number. So she was like, why not say it three times? It's like how they do 666. Why not do 777? I respect it. I like it. Yeah, she has people on there everywhere. Everybody from Kodak Black to 21 Savage, Childish Gambino, Lil Wayne, Lil Dirk, uh, and Nardo Wick. And let's play, uh, let's play the joint with Nardo Wick. It's called Stepper. Now, Nico, Don't you kill nobody for your hoe. Yo, you stupid. Just want to throw that out there on a fine Friday. Don't you kill nobody for your hoe. You kill somebody for your wife. Not now, for your hoe. Now, Nigo, you know Nigo. He's the creator of Bathing Ape. He released an album today. It's called I Know Nigo. He has uh, clips, gonna... Uh, ASAP Ferg, uh, a talented creator, just to name a few. Buddy, he has a new album. It's called Super Ghetto. You could pick that up. Uh, Denzel, uh, Denzel Curry, he has a new album, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. You can Melt definitely My check Eyes, that See Your Future. That's an interesting title. Mm-hmm. And Key Glock, of course, that's Dolph's cousin. I'm definitely Eddie. listening to that. Yellow Tape 2 is out today as well. I enjoy me some Key Glock. Drop on the clues bonds for Key Glock there. Dumb and Dumb Up Part 1 and 2 with uh, Young Dolph's some of my favorite music for the past year. Now, Kid Cudi uh, released a new joint today. It's called Stars in the Sky. What the hell? Hey. A lot of people love Kid <laughs> what, the <laughs> what the hell was that? I got to hear it in this whole context, but Jesus Christ. Hey. A lot of people love Kid Cudi. That sounds like that's on a good white movie. All right. Now, I, don't, I never know this young man's name. Uh, Junior Choi. You know the joint to the moon? Take my side to the moon. You know that song? No, I don't. Well, he released a, a remix uh, featuring Gunna. Can we hear a little bit of it? Pull up the keys, don't turn up. Smoke out the pee, this guy that we are run up. Reflection of me, I bought it a brand new Rover. Yeah, that joint to the moon is like a top 10 record, so shout to that young man. I think he's from uh, London. I heard, I mean, I, I've, I've heard that hook before. I've heard that song, now that you played it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know who the person was, because I'm old. 4-2 Doug featuring ESTG. They got a new record called Free the Shriners. All right. They got a whole album coming up. Mm -hmm. 42 Doug and ESTG. Yep, so that was a single free to shine. And also, uh, shout to Cardi B. It was announced yesterday that Cardi B, Offset, and Baby Culture will be on an episode of Baby Shark. Uh, Cardi B will be Sharky B. Offset will be Off Shark. And Culture will be Culture Shark. You ain't got no music for us? Don't uh -huh. be teasing us like that and not play no good damn Baby Shark music now. Baby Shark, 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 Anybody Shark, ask you Shark. that? All right, well... Oh. But the reason I even mentioned Cardi B because she's on the extended version of No Love. Okay. That's Summer Walker featuring SZA and now Cardi B. Right. Nothing makes you feel old like New Music Fridays and scratching. Those are the two things that make <laughs> me feel old nowadays. When you stand up and you try to just like, you know, touch the, touch the floor like that. And you realize your hand screen's a little too tight. That's age. Okay. And New Music Friday. My All right. I don't know nothing about nothing that you just played. You know okay. Summer Walker, you know Kid Cudi, you know 42 Doug. No, Kid Cudi is you know a different Lotto. generation. I like Key Glock. You know all those people. You know I like Key 42 Glock. Doug and the FTG. I still, still makes me feel old, okay? All right, well, you are old. That's right, and oh. proud to be old, okay? Right. Now, play some goddamn new edition on this radio this morning. <laughs> <laughs> what you got in the mix coming up, damn Well, it. it is a throwback mix. There you so go. We're now we talking my language. Back on a Old nigga time, God damn it. 800-585-105. When we do this on a Friday. So what we got what coming up? Come on. We're going to start the mix up with uh, some Lost Boys. Uh, oh, okay. Why, All right. Right. Let me why stretch. are you stretching like that? Why do some lights, why cameras, are you stretching? My goodness. <laughs> I'm oh, ready. My goodness. Let's go. What else? We got a bunch of joints in the mix. Give me one more. What else? What else? You don't even remember. 
Mm. I'm ready, though. You see me? I'm scratching. I'll go over here scratching. Took it to the streets a little bit. Shook ones, uh, mob deep. You know, we could go down south with a little T.I., rubber okay, band man. Okay, okay. Boing. Now you know, you're we, talking about language, God damn it. All right. So we'll get to the mix next. And again, now you're talking on language. The car show goes down uh, June 19th, Father's Day weekend. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Kids five and under are free. Uh, old school cars. I can't even look at Charlamagne right now. He's dancing in front of me. New cars. Uh, jumpies for the kids. Gaming and all that. It's going to be a family fun day. So get your tickets. Just... Click the link in my bio, and I can't wait to see you June 19th. So let's get to the mix. It's the People's Choice Mix. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hey, it's Angela Yee. Have you taken a look at the general insurance lately? Switch to the general, and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions. Open. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now we got a shout out to Cheryl McKissick, Daniel, and Don Peebles for joining us this morning. Man, a lot of free, a lot of free jury they gave out this morning. Yeah, a lot of gems uh, on the Breakfast Club. Make sure you go to the Breakfast Club YouTube page and um, check that out later in full. They were here for over an hour, so that's right. It's a lot, a lot of good uh, discussions in there. All right. All right, and uh, when we come back, we got the positive note and more, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, it's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Just want to remind you, Texas. Texas versus New York, the car show. Trader Truth versus DJ MV, Houston versus New York. We're doing a car show June 19th, Father's Day weekend. Uh, I'm talking celebrity cars, exotic cars, old school cars, monster trucks, bikes, nice car, uh, carnival rides, games, face painting, jump roping, uh, jumpies, gaming. Uh, it's just going to be a family fun day. If you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Uh, it's 12 to 5. five. Uh, kids 5 and under are free. So I want to see you in Houston, Texas on June 19th. Juneteenth. All right? Now, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do have a positive note, man. And I said this during Donkey of the Day. I just want to reiterate it because it's real. Everything is energy. Your thoughts begin it. Your emotions amplify it. And your action increases its momentum. Remember Breakfast that. Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? 